Damn, what's going on, guys? Eggman, your boy, John Egger. <coughs> back with another, sorry, back with another episode of Eggcast. Episode number five. I figured I'm just like, I'm sitting here, I'm waiting on um, a little bit of Mary Jane. So I thought, you know, I'll make another episode. I tried to get Sean to come through, but he's at school. It's like 10 in the morning. It's March 27th, 10 a.m., 10.05. And, you know, I don't know. Really don't have a ton to talk about, but, you know, I'm chilling. Uh, I went back to school on Monday, so that's been cool. Um, Just, you know, trying to keep on top of my work. I'm a little distracted by, you know, good things, but trying to stay on task and then um i don't know i'm excited there's a um rowan is offering a class within my concentration called writing comedy and i'm really excited to take that because like i'm trying to i was writing a lot of stand-up or like this time last year and like i never went on stage or anything like i never i never got um never really got out there. I think I'm going to wait to do that until I'm 21 just because of the dynamic of clubs and I don't the fact that I don't want to um I don't want to be kicked out as soon as I get done my set. Like I want to be able to do, enjoy myself and just I want to feel comfortable. You know what I mean? Cuz I feel like if you're a good comedian, you're a good comedian, but there's still that uncomfortability there when you have to I mean, when you're a kid, it's kind of cute like when you're like 13, 14, whatever if you're performing. But when you're, like, 19, when you're, like, right before that age, they're like, look at this fucking young douchebag. Like, I'd rather wait until I can walk in there and just kind of do my thing. You know what I mean? Rather than, like, be with, like, my dad or something. Nothing against him or anybody else, but just, like, it's just a strange dynamic. But, yeah, I'm waiting. Once I get 21, once I turn 21, I definitely got to get on stage. Like, I'm going to either make myself or somebody is going to make me get on stage, but probably gonna just make myself but I guess I can write material for a while and just kind of see how I do and I'm sure I can get out there like here and there maybe at like certain events and stuff before I turn 21 like I'm sure I can get out there but as far as like comedy clubs go um you know gonna wait till I'm of age to be there because like I mean as a as a stand-up comedian like you're the one with the microphone because you're commanding the room everybody is listening to your voice it's a rhetorical performance a rhetorical presentation of you and really it's like it's like anything like it kind of reminds me of just like ancient like you know greek and roman times when people would be meeting in the forum and like somebody's controlling the crowd you know what i mean like i feel like most comedians are naturally even the ones who seem shy and like self really self-deprecating are naturally um how do I say sorry I'm trying to stay on task I'm like um <laughs> the ones that are uh the ones that are naturally like even if they're you know or what I'm trying to say is comedians even the ones that are weird and like they act awkward and self-deprecating they're naturally like leaders because the in a room they're the one who's conducting you know what I mean like I feel like that's I feel like that's how a lot of people are like they're just natural born like type leaders and like they're you know because think about just like just think about any situation like the leader is the one speaking to the mass to the masses to the crowd and stand-up is the same thing I mean it's not exactly the same thing you're just you're telling stories and you're telling jokes and you know you're giving people you're giving people something to relate to and to laugh about but it's you know the dynamic is similar as far as just controlling the crowd and like I've always it's weird because I've always known that I liked doing that I've always kind of known that I liked putting content out even when I was like little I was trying to get into the YouTube game and like obviously never went anywhere with it but like when I was little I was trying to like get into that and then I had some videos with some views like I had this one I was like in like fourth grade this is on my old channel I deleted all the videos but in like fourth grade I made a video of me and my sh- my goalie equipment my street hockey stuff and I was like in like my mom's room or something like because there was hardwood they had hardwood floors and I was um doing like the butterfly and like getting back up I was just getting up and going down and getting back up for like two minutes straight that was the whole video and it got like I mean it didn't get a lot of views but it got like 
something like 20,000 views. That's like pretty impressive for what it was. I mean, I was nine. Like, I was like, I thought that was cool. But besides that, I mean, I, have, I haven't really had much exposure. Because, I mean, I haven't really tried to do much. But that's all kind of changing now. Like, I mean, you know, I'm going to, I'm a writing arts major. I go to school for writing and... I'm probably going to concentrate in creative writing because, like, for a while, I was like, I don't want to specialize because, like, why not keep your options open and practical, good job, which, like, is all good for when you're starting out because I feel like you should build up some money for, like, starting out. Like, you shouldn't – because, like, obviously, as a comedian, like, you spend forever just being poor. You know what I mean? Like, you spend forever before you – if you ever do, like, become successful and, like, kind of make it a little bit, so to speak – but, like, also, fuck that. Because I want to do what I love. But, I don't know. You can still do that and do other things to support yourself or other people. And, you know, there's no problem with that. So, I guess I shouldn't shut that door. But, you know, definitely passionate about my future my goals sorry I'm talking so much about myself it's just you know I'm the only one here I mean but you know it's chilling I hope you guys are doing well um it's springtime now it's beautiful out I think it's fucking cold today though New Jersey dude you never know in New Jersey like I saw something on Facebook the other day it was like welcome to New Jersey winter is at 6am um Spring is at 10 a.m., summer is at 2 p.m., and fall is at 4.30, so dress accordingly. Which, like, that's some real shit. But, yeah, it's going to be, like, 50 later. Right now it's, like, 42, so I guess it's warming up a little bit. That's pretty cool. I'm going to lower this so I can kneel against my desk. Even though that's not really a good posture to keep, I really don't give a fuck. But my back is fucked anyway, honestly. I have, like, those shoulders, like, that come way forward, like, like, um, Conor McGregor shoulders, like, if you ever look at, like, I'll pull up a picture, and I don't really think it's even from, like, punching and stuff, because, like, I work the bag a lot, and, like, you know, I kind of spar sometimes with, like, friends, but, um, like, if you... I think it's just like a genetic thing. I mean, it's a lot of tightness, obviously, and stuff too. But I think it's just like a genetic disposition, like as far as like the position. Like, look at his, like, look at his shoulders. They're like really far forward. I wonder what they're saying about it on like bodybuilding.com. Bodybuilding.com is such a Chad. Um, website, such a meathead forum, but there's also some pretty knowledgeable people on here, and it's just, like, interesting to see, like, anatomical, like, different, like, anatomical pathologies, or, I don't know if they're, if it would be considered a pathology, but just, like, just, like, you know, traits. It looks weird, like, someone clipped his shoulders and chest onto a skinny body. Maybe it's his posture. It's he, like, does only workouts to build chest, shoulder straps. Yeah, but how do you not notice how far forward his fucking, like, shoulders sit, though? Because that's the whole thing. And, I mean, he's obviously, he's going to be somewhat fit. Like, it's not like a fucking, like, he's a fucking UFC fighter, but. Someone said, looks like a poverty chest with minimal upper chest mass to me. Dude, he's a fucking... He'll beat the piss out of you. Bodybuilders are so gay. That's why he got the tat. Like, this... I'm uh, sorry. I thought these were gonna be, like... I thought these were gonna be fucking... That's just, like, a troll. Rounded shoulders of peace. He needs to do a rear... Delt raises flies. I do those. For someone obsessed with human movement, he sure has awful posture. Facts. But you know what? 
it's kind of hard to get rid of that. And Conor McGregor honestly inspires me because to see someone with fucking shoulders like that, that fucking bend forward and like, I try not to hunch over. Like I try not to be like a fucking hunchback with the forward head posture and shit. But like, my, if you see my mom, her shoulders are the same way, and she was a you know she was a fucking IFBB uh, women's physique fucking bodybuilder. But like, and her shoulders are the fucking same way. Like they sit forward. And I think I'm more self-conscious about it than people, like, notice, but just like that, like, invisible lat syndrome, he's, he's not a bodybuilder, he trains for his sport. If that were the case, he w wouldn't have trained his chest and neglected his upper back. Surrounded shoulders make that very obvious. Athletes training their chest is worthless. Dude! He has that posture because he fucking throws punches all day. And he's and if you ever watch him punch, his shoulder, like, subluxates or whatever. Like, like, like fucking almost dislocates from its socket. Because he's, like, extending that reach with the pec minor. Like, fuck. Ow. I just think that's retarded. I keep saying retarded. Look, I'm... I don't care. I'm gonna say it. Like, it's not directed towards anybody. I mean, they don't... Like, nobody ever... Like, Tom Segura put it best. Like, nobody ever says that. Like, hey, look at that guy. Like, it's like just uh, describing something. And nobody even... I might add, I'm pretty sure nobody in, like, the medical field or the professional, you know, and, and no nobody who works professionally with um, disabled and menti mentally handicapped people uses that term. So, like, it doesn't have to be associated with that. Like, it can just be something. Like, because, like, you know, you just read something. Like, I, everybody does that when you're fucking on Facebook and, like, when your asshole, like, friends, wives, or, like, a husband or just some douchebag, like, says something and you're just like, look at this fucking retarded, like, post or this retarded person, like... You guys know what I'm talking about. Genetics trains for M. Trains for MMA. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of genetics. He doesn't train chest. He would do basic strength and conditioning lifts. Genetics around his shoulders from years of boxing, etc. He seems to have the perfect body for fighting. People, <laughs> this guy knows. People fucking lol at people thinking fighters want to build muscle. They're trying to cut every ounce of useless weight they can. That's true. Yeah, bro, these guys are retarded. Lol, no. McGregor has a clear case of pronation and invisible lat syndrome. Rounded shoulders come from something like a slashing at a desk for years. Or from overtraining chest. He's a professional fighter, so it's likely every day was chest day for the man with the tiger belly tattoo. Dude, this guy's a fucking retard. Like, when you punt... <sighs> See, that's... That's... That's definitely coming from a person who's never thrown, like, a punch or a proper punch. Like... He wants to be a Chael Sonnen meets Nick Diaz, Michael Bisping type personality, and it's quite annoying. But to each their own. This is back in 2015. Lots of fighters have... This previous guy, Air Jordan B, you're an idiot. I mean, it's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm slashing at a desk, but still. I also try to open up. Lots of fighters have rounded shoulders, it's just striking instead of boxing. He said he doesn't see the point in weight training when he could spend that time working.
working on technique or sparring. His chest would look a lot better if it was if every day was chest day. He's also never had a desk job in his life. I know when you don't like a fighter, you build up some psychotic personal hatred towards them, but please try and relax. <laughs> Retracted shoulders happens from a tight chest, lower ab muscles. Length and back secondary muscles. This length tension relationship looks very off. Can If you seriously think striking promotes rounded shoulders, you are delusional. I think it's less of what he does exercise wise and just how he carries himself. Most men pushing their shoulders forward makes them look bigger from the front. Most men think, oh. Most men think pushing their shoulders forward makes them look bigger from the front, which is true, but it only leads to posture issues and looking really ridiculous. Connor, who I'm a big fight fan of, has a little bit of man syndrome. I think it's just his fucking shoulders. Look, if you thought that was directed at you, it definitely was. So you think people pushing their shoulders forward can lead to posture issues, but rounding your shoulders for hours and hours on end when training can't? Obviously not all fighters do this, but I'll link a shitload of pictures tomorrow. Yeah, that's so true though, because when you fucking bodybuild, like all you, when you do train chest, all you do is round your shoulders forward. And then like yesterday I did back, so I was pulling back. But you know. Like this shoulder sits a little far forward, a little farther forward than this one. But uh, it's just fucking dumb, man. Yeah, but look at his shoulders, like that's insane. Mine are like honestly not far off, like but I mean a normal person would look at him and be like, What the fuck? Like he's in great shape. What are you talking about? Like but look at his shoulders, like look at the way his chest sits. Like if I just look up like rounded try my best to stay up, bro. It's hard. Military posture. I can never be in the military because, like, naturally my, my straight standing posture is curvy, so, like, they would be like, what the fuck? Like, It really do be like that. But damn. That's the worst. Like, if you knew that you were just like, blah. Normal spine, kyphotic spine. Uh, yeah, see, that's so ugly. Like, you have that, and like I have that, kind of, not like all the way, but like, especially when I'm sitting down here doing the podcast or something, I'm fucking stuck like that. I mean, if I kind of 
of just hold my shoulders back. I don't really give myself a choice. But the fact that he can bring his fucking hand all the way around. I think a lot of that comes from just like building up like back muscle and shit too. Like, I'm gonna go on YouTube. <sighs> what are we at? 21. I'm not gonna do this one that much longer. I'm just gonna. I'll probably end it once um. Once my marriage you is on its way. I don't even know. This will be a, like a good little short podcast. Uh, you get to hear me talk about a couple things. You know how it be. YouTube be lagging. You know how that shit be. Um. I want to see if I can find Arnold training back. Just because I was doing T-bar rows yesterday. And I want to watch like how he was doing them. Or lat pull downs. I was doing lat pull downs too. I mean, there's only really one way to do them properly, but it's just cool because he's fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger. We have similar names. Mine's just Egger. He's Schwarzenegger. I'm excited to go to class today. It's just going to be a good ass Wednesday. Hope everybody out there has a good ass Wednesday. This probably isn't going to come out till like. Thursday, but I hope you have a good ass Thursday or whenever you watch. I hope you have a good day. Damn those old um I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't know if this if my Nah, you can see that. Yeah, you can see like the whole screen. Dope. That um old school oh shit. Just kinda knocked into the mic a little bit. But like that old school um fucking that pull down machine with like the circular plates and the the grips like that that's so cool bodybuilding is a crazy sport because it's very aesthetic and not crazy functional and like I do a lot of isometrics as well as just like functional fitness but I don't know it's just one of those crazy things especially I mean, it's a commitment, you know what I mean? There's no dabbling bodybuilders who actually bodybuild and, like, compete, like... so tired already I hit like a few things to tea but I got up kind of early this morning I would have slept in if I knew my day was gonna my morning was gonna kind of go like this because I haven't really been doing any work um I have this assignment due today I think we're workshopping it today and um I think we're workshopping it in my rhetorics class but I'm pretty sure it's due today I mean I'm pretty much done it I think he want. I don't know if he wants like if he says anything today that he specifically wants that I didn't include, I'm gonna do it. But it just be like that. Like Damn, that's crazy. I saw a picture. It was an NHL on NBC tweet and it says Devin Dubnik, he's the goalie for the Minnesota Wild of the NHL. He says says he's been using the same throat guard since he was 17, and he's 32. And that's funny, because then Andrew Raycroft retweeted that. He was a goalie in the NHL for a long time. And he said, I wore the same goalie jock I got when I was 12 for my entire career. Had to add another one when I went pro. My great equipment guys always curse me having to sew it back together. And that's funny. Because I did the same thing. Like, I, um... I used to wear, I would just, when I was, up until I was like 11 or 12, I would always kind of just wear like a player jock in that, like I would just wear a cup, and then um, when I was around 12, I got a goalie jock, 
and like it's still the one that I have today. Like it's you know, I wear it over the player cup, so I wear two cups. But that's crazy because like goalies are like that with like little pieces of gear. Like obviously, pad. I mean everybody likes pads and stuff too. So like eventually people will get new shit. But a lot of times that stuff wears out. You know what I mean? But something like a cup or like a neck guard or like something that. Oh, I'm getting gassy. It's 10:30 a.m. It's my gassy time, I guess. I'm gonna start scheduling when I when to have gas and shit. It just came out of like both ends, like vigorously, randomly. But look, I think I'm just fucking tired, which is crazy because it's like early in the morning. But it just be like that sometimes. I've been listening to a lot of Oliver Francis. Shout out to Oliver Francis. Oh, that fart was so disgusting. And I think M- I've been eating MCT oil. I've been putting it on my, on my um, my eggs. And apparently Joe Rogan said that makes you gassy. I hate to reference Joe Rogan, the most basic thing I could do as the host of a podcast, but it'd be like that. It do. Ah, jeez. Okay. I'll go for a few more minutes. Stop the 30 mark. Something like that. I don't know. Ah, jeez. Yo, I know there's not that many people watching and listening to this, but um, for those who are, like... Um, I would really appreciate it if you just like like the video and subscribe maybe and if you want to comment just let me know how you're doing like I kind of want to hear like what you guys are thinking and like what you guys want me to talk about so like just comment on this podcast like what you want me to say in the next podcast or what you want me to cover and you know whether I'm by myself or with friends like you know with other people I'll do that I'll do exactly that and that'll be cool, so, you know, oh, damn, I really gotta take a shit, so I think I'm actually just gonna wrap it up now, but, you know, cool, short little podcast, I appreciate, um, whoever's still listening, and, yeah, peace, uh, have a happy, healthy day, go do something, motherfucker, I'm out. (laughs) 